So there were some questions relating to the purity of the myocytes once they've been isolated. Now, um, we, we have never really had a problem with uh, myocyte purity. Then. Just uh, by following the normal gravity settling steps, uh, which are described in our protocol and which most other labs uh, use some version of as well. So this is, this is the concept of allowing the, the cells uh, after isolation to settle just by gravity in four different tubes uh, sequentially as the calcium is reintroduced. And uh, because myocytes tend to be um, quite considerably more dense than non-myocyte cells, they will settle uh, much faster, uh, sometimes within just a few minutes than, than the non-myocytes do. And, and then uh, once the myocytes are settled, the, the supernatant from that is then removed uh, which contains the non-myocytes, and then that myocyte pellet is transferred to the next tube. So in each serial settling, you will there therefore have a, a purer population of myocytes. And, and by the final round of settling, we find that actually the, uh, the, the purity of myocytes is, is very high. It's really you know, above 95%. Now, um, if you need you know, incredibly pure myocytes for whatever reason, then you could actually allow less time for the cells to settle um, and, and what that will do is that you'll have even less chance of, of getting non-myocytes in your myocyte pellet however you will obviously have some myocytes which haven't had time to settle yet so your yield of myocytes at the end will be will be lower uh, similarly you could you could add extra settling steps to, to further purify as well we, we really uh, find this necessary um, unless you have a very specific reason where this needs to be done I'll, I'll talk about the non-myocyte fraction as well. So this is the, the supernatant, which doesn't, in theory, contain the myocytes that we, which you take off, although, of course, it still does contain some myocytes which haven't had time to settle yet, as well as a lot of the, the myocytes uh, which have died. They tend to be, for whatever reason, slightly less dense. So um, the dead myocytes tend to come more in the... Um, in the non-myocyte fraction as well. So your non-myocyte fraction actually contains myocytes, dead myocytes, as well as the non-myocytes and cell debris. And if you're interested to, to use this to, um, to isolate particular non-myocyte um, cells from, then that can be done. For fibroblasts, that's relatively easy because these cells, they're very adherent. So you can just plate these in the presence of 10% FBS in some normal culture media like DNM. Uh, onto a plastic tissue culture plastic surface and we, actually within an hour a lot of the fibroblasts will adhere to this surface whereas the myocytes will, will not um, and therefore you can just wash them off um, after a couple of washes with just PBS what you're left for what you're left with then is mainly fibroblasts and and you can keep those in culture for a few days in the presence of FBS and, and those fibroblasts will proliferate and they'll really dominate the culture so even though there might be some endothelial cells and, and other cell types there, uh, you'll be left with, uh, after a few days, mostly fibroblasts. Um, of course, if you're interested in uh, other cell types, there's, there's ways to get to those as well. So you can use uh, your typical fax or max with magnetic uh, sorting strategies. Um, and there's, there's also kits, which are, which are sometimes column-based, which are uh, offered by companies like Milton Yee. And those can help you to isolate out things like smooth muscle cells or endothelial cells. And then once you have those, you can really um, do whatever you're interested to do with them. So you can grow them uh, independently or you can um, culture them and, and then recombine those, uh, those different cell types back together in, in co-culture models, which, which can be quite interesting. I've, I've got a couple of figures on the, on the right here. So um, just the, the, the top right one, you can see that initially um, the myocyte on, on the left, and they're, they're red in this figure, and, and, the, and the, uh, the fibroblast fractions, they, they really are quite separate. You don't see many green cells in, in the myocyte uh, fraction, so that's green for vimentin. So there's no fibroblasts there, uh, and there's no myocytes in the, in the fibroblast fraction as well. So, so they really do uh, separate quite well. Um, and then in the bottom right, you can see that actually um, we've, we've then recombined. So what we've done is we trypsinized the fibroblasts and just put them back into a culture with myocytes. Uh, and then you can have a, a co-culture system where you can study things like interactions between different cell types there. That's, um, I think, mostly what I'll say on this issue of uh, myocyte purification and, and purity.
unless anyone else has anything to add to that. No, I, I think that summarized very well. And I think this is our experience as well. And we oftentimes has other laboratory actually, you know, come to get the, the supernet uh, from uh, mouse isolation to isolate uh, fibroblasts, the most common uh, cell type uh, people interested on in, uh, taking the supernet on that. So basically this will allow you to have a one you know, one storm, many birds, and people can actually uh, share 